Kamak tutorial. Crimping atungak with kunak. What you will need. Some crimping pliers. Tikik. Needle and thread or sinew. A shaping tool, plastic bag, a washcloth or an old rag, and a heavy weight. Let's moisten our soles. To do that, you will take your Atungak, I'll cut out in a damp cloth. Just damp enough to where it has a lot of moisture, but not enough to drip. Place it in between the soles on the flesh side only, making sure that the cloth lays nice and flat and even. Go ahead and place your soles together, flesh side together. Make sure that that cloth covers the whole sole. And grab your plastic bag and put them both in there, making sure that it is entirely covered. Once you have that covered up, take your heavy weight. I like to use a cement block that I purchased at a store. But you can use a bunch of books or put it under something that's heavy. Just make sure that there is something heavy on top of your soles. And you will let them sit overnight. Once they've sat overnight, you go ahead and take the heavy weight off and go ahead and take one of them out, leaving the other one in there so that it doesn't dry out while you work on this one. Your sole should be nice and pliable. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be so pliable that uh, there's it doesn't keep its shape when you bend it, but still pliable enough to where you can make nice crimps. So let's go for it. Time to crimp. You'll need a pair of pliers. I have these flathead pliers that I filed down customized so they work good on soles like this. I like to start on one side of the atungak, starting by crimping on each side to measure where to start and where to stop. I create my crimps by pushing together the pliers, not too much, not all the way closed, just enough to form that nice crimp when you are crimping you want to make sure that your atungak is soft enough to where it forms those crimps without damaging the skin if it's too dry you'll find that the crimps are hard to form and you would need to put it back in the plastic bag with the damp towel over it for another day if you find that the crimps are not staying that means it's too wet and you will need to set it aside to dry a bit before you continue crimping. This part is uh, time sensitive because you don't want the atungak to dry out too much while you're working on it. So uh, if you find that it's taking too long, just go ahead and place it in a uh, the plastic bag again and it makes sure it doesn't get too dry. Just add a little moisture from the damp cloth. This process can take a long time and also be strenuous so make sure to take breaks and stretch. Every time you do that you can put it back into the plastic bag and let it sit until you're ready to work on it again. If you find that 
you can't finish it that day, just put it in the plastic bag and in the freezer until you're ready to work on it some more. So when you're rounding the toe or the heel, you need to make a V crimp, which is half of a crimp, half as long as what you've been making normally. And it should look like that, half long. And then the next one, make a full crimp right next to it, kind of making that V shape. And what that will do is that it'll help turn the crimps so that when your atungok is in its final shape, looking like a, a shoe, it'll be nice and straight up and down and, and it won't look like it's slant or crooked. And you continue doing that until it rounds out around the curve and making sure that your crimps are all the same length is really important it's okay to make your crimps longer at the this stage because when you get to the shaping part you could always uh, shape out and push out the toe or the heel to so that it fits the size foot you want this part I, I learned over time. It took me a long time to be able to do these crimps, so don't be discouraged. We sew the crimps together after we're done because as you can see, the crimps haven't quite stayed all the way, which is normal. Um, what I do is I take the needle and thread, put a big knot on the end, and I sew through the atungak right at the first crimp, and I'll stitch through each crimp stitching through the crimp um, putting one stitch in and out of the crimp and then moving over just a little bit and doing the stitch again making sure not to go in and out of the sole just going on the top part on the top layer and after about five to ten crimps i pull the thread tight so that the crimps come together just like that and I do this through all the crimps every single crimp and this thread is really helpful for when I shape the sole again later but also when I moisten the top part again to sew the body of the kamek to the atungak it, it helps it keep it keeps its shape and doesn't um the, the crimps doesn't do not come out when I do this part. So once I'm done, I put the needle in through uh, just like I did at the beginning and I pull tight until I get the shape that I want. This is the heel. So I, I like to make my heel straight up and down from the ground. If you are doing the other side, make sure that you try and keep them as equal as possible you want them to be the same as the other side so take your time in shaping them so that they have the same type of shape I like to bend the sides of my atungak to kind of help with the form and the shape Your crimps aren't going to look perfect right now, but don't be discouraged. We'll be able to go back and recrimp to make them look nice and neat and, and finished looking. All right, I'm happy with the way it looks, so I go ahead and tie a knot and cut the excess thread off. And all right, they're all stitched, and now we're ready for the next step which is to recrimp. We are going to take our pliers again and go over the crimps, all the crimps that we did before. We're gonna go over them to make sure that they're nice and straight and crisp, nice and sharp, and you'll have a much more polished finish after doing this. Sometimes if your atungak is still too moist or damp, 
you want to let them sit for a little bit, 30 minutes, 45 minutes until they dry up a little bit so your crimps will stay better and be more sharp. Just make sure they don't become too dry or else you can't manipulate the skin anymore. This is what they look like before I crimped, right after I stitched them together. And here it is after, after I recrimped. They look much better and more straight, so I'm really happy. They'll shrink a little bit as they dry. And now it's time to shape your atungok. Go ahead and take your shaping tool, which I like to use is a back of a butter knife, and I'm gonna use it to shape my atungok the way I like it. It also helps making it look a little bit more finished and professional in my opinion, so I like to use this tool. And it also helps to stretch your sole if you find that your sole isn't as big as you need it to. So use your shaping tool. Should be a nice round edge, edge like this one to help shape it. And I do that on all the sides, on the toes, on the sides, on the heel. And I just do that until it get to the shape that I like. With the toe, I like it to kind of lean in a little bit. I don't like I don't like it when they just go up and down. I like them to lean in just a little bit, so I will shape it in that way that I like. It's taken me a lot a long time to get to a point where I feel comfortable sharing what I'm doing, but I know I'm learning still, and I I would love to hear. Any advice or tips on how you do it and just um, ready to continue on my journey here and sharing what I am learning on my way with you guys. Now we are ready to make a sewing guide. You will need your crimping pliers and I will go about an eighth of an inch down and pinch and turn it outwards so you're gonna do this all the way around side by side creating that nice groove and that's gonna be your guide when you're sewing the body of your kamik to your atungak I want to take some time to acknowledge all of the teachers and knowledge bearers that have shared their time and skill with me to allow me to learn, make mistakes, and give me words of encouragement to keep going. I am so grateful for you and appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much for helping me on this journey. All right, so now that they're done and ready to sew, you can put them in the freezer until that time is to sew the body onto the atungak. Koyanak book for joining me. Check out my next video on making a pattern and sewing the kamak to the sole.